This is Dr. DeBoskin, and in this video I'm going to talk about the storage of energy in plants. The 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde that is formed as a result of photosynthesis is an amazingly versatile molecule. Using it plus water, nitrates, sulfates, and minerals, plants construct everything inside themselves. It must be rearranged and altered in the cytoplasm to build up larger, more complex molecules. This constructive metabolism is called anabolism. The synthetic pathways of polysaccharides and fats, storage forms of energy and carbon, are important because NADPH and ATP cannot be stored for even a short time and must be used within the cell. The simple sugar glucose and the disaccharide sucrose are stable enough to be moved from cell to cell either in the vascular tissue of a plant or in a bloodstream. They are also sufficiently stable to last for weeks or months. The problem with storing large quantities of monosaccharide or disaccharide is that they cause cells to absorb water by osmosis. Starch is a large, high molecular weight polymer of glucose too large to be transported. It is even more stable than glucose, lasts for years, and does not cause the cell to absorb water. Lipids are an even more concentrated storage form of energy that can be synthesized rapidly and stored in large quantities. Anabolic synthesis of glucose is called gluconeogenesis. Both fructose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate are versatile, useful molecules that enter many metabolic pathways. Plants store starch in both chloroplasts and amelioplasts. During daylight hours, as photosynthesis is occurring, most of the 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde is retained within the chloroplast and gluconeogenesis converts it to glucose. It is polymerized to starch within the chloroplast and by afternoon chloroplasts are usually swollen because of the large starch grains they contain. At night, the starch is depolymerized back to glucose, which is transported from the chloroplast to the cytosol. Much of it is then converted to sucrose, loaded into the phloem, and transported to various parts of the plant that need the carbohydrate. By morning, most chloroplasts have little or no starch left in them. In organs involved in long-term storage of starch, such as potato tubers and starchy seeds like wheat and rice, sugar moves from the phloem into the parenchyma cells, then enters amelioplasts, where it is repolymerized to starch again. Most of the sugar we eat and drink comes from sugarcane, which is a type of grass with large stems more than two meters tall. This harvester cuts the shoot off at the ground level slices the stems into pieces called joints and loads them into a cart behind the tractor. Pieces of leaves are so light they blow away. These joints of sugar cane must be taken to a refinery and have their sap squeezed out and refined into raw sugar within 18 hours. Immediately after the stems are cut in the field, enzymes begin to convert disaccharide sucrose into monosaccharides glucose and fructose, both of which are less valuable than sucrose. Sucrose is obtained by boiling cane sap to concentrate the sucrose until it becomes so concentrated it crystallizes. The crystals are centrifuged out and stored in giant piles of raw sugar, shown here. The remaining liquid is molasses. Raw sugar is converted to refined white sugar by dissolving it again and reboiling it to recrystallize it after which it is filtered. The raw sugar in this warehouse will last indefinitely if it is kept dry. In conclusion, energy produced in a leaf transforms into different compounds that allow for intermediate or long-term storage.